And my second uh, guest is Professor uh, Adam Wierzbicki, who's a professor at the Polish Japanese Academy for Information Technology and the pioneer of research on web uh, content credibility. He is also an expert on big data, uh, web and data mining and uh, machine learning or more general in data science. Hi. Uh, this title, uh, the checking in inculcating and self-organizing trusted sources of information, uh, it, it's very interesting when you think of this issue of credibility. Uh, we are coming across many different websites uh, uh, in the web uh, who may or may not be credible. And it's not always very clear. Actually, in many cases, it is somewhere in the, in the gray area and it's very hard to, to decide whether you can trust that source or whether it's, it's biased or it's, it's, it's just not okay. And with that, I would like to start the discussion uh, by asking uh, my first question to, to the professor um, about truth and credibility. Sometimes we think that those uh, elements and those notions are interchangeable, the truth, the truth is true. credibility and the other way around. But uh, I know for a fact that they are not. I would like to ask you how to tell them apart. And when you when you are in out there in the cyber cyberspace, which one is the most important? Uh, all right, thank you. Thank you for this question. Uh, well, uh, I'd like to uh, show you a few slides very briefly and uh, um, oh, if I can, because right now I don't have the ability to share the screen, but uh, okay, let me start with the definition of credibility because that is probably what uh, uh, can start this discussion going. Uh, basically, uh, credibility is a property of information uh, that we receive. Uh, and uh, it is a property of information that makes us believe that this information is true. Uh, so you can think of it as a credibility evaluation is something that we are doing all the time. Actually, whenever we communicate, uh, we're doing this. And it is probably a part of our evolutionary background as human beings. Uh, on the other hand, truth, uh, well, uh, it is a completely different concept. It is actually independent of credibility. You can think of information which is true, but unfortunately is not credible. On the other hand, you can think of information which is not true, uh, but is credible. And this, this is the case of all successful fraud. So you, you can easily imagine examples of, of this kind, unfortunately. Uh, well, uh, you could treat truth as um, ideal uh, or maybe as something which is unattainable that depends on your epistemological um, opinion in reality. On the other hand, credibility is much more practical uh, because this is something we are doing all the time. We are evaluating credibility all the time. Uh, you can think of credibility as a complex uh, signal which depends on, unfortunately, many things. What you said about the web pages. Uh, credibility being ambiguous often, that's because web pages are complex uh, pieces of information with a lot of different things. For one instance, this is actually a division of say, uh, credibility into different concepts that has been done by a very famous uh, psychologist and media scientist, Karl Hovland, even into, I think, in the 1950s, it was quite a long time ago. Uh, so, uh, he divided credibility into source credibility, message credibility, media credibility, uh, like you see here on the picture. And all of these can impact our credibility evaluations. When we receive some information or when we look at a web page, unfortunately, our credibility evaluation can be affected by a lot of different things as well, like by our knowledge, which is a very important factor. Or uh, unfortunately, also by our social environment, for example, by peer pressure, right? You can think of that definitely peer pressure being a factor which impacts uh, credibility. Sorry, I, I ran ahead with a couple of slides. Take a look at this picture. Um, you can use credibility to define the things we're talking about, fake news or disinformation. For example, uh, in this picture, we see a situation when we have a source. The source uh, has a negative evaluation of its own message. So it doesn't believe its own message, but it depends for the receiver to believe this message, to find uh, that the, the, the uh, credibility evaluation of this message is positive. And this is the case of all disinformation and fake news out there, right? 
uh, it's can, you, can, you can see that the, this can be defined. I'm using here the terminology from uh, the European uh, study uh, that you're probably familiar with. Let's look at this case. It's a little bit different. Now, the original source's credibility relation is positive and it intends the credibility relation of the receiver to be positive. Isn't that a perfect case where we actually don't need to do anything? Unfortunately not. So you can see that uh, we are still investigating different kinds of information like, uh, for example, the case of just forwarding fake news, fake news. This isn't the original source really. This should be a forwarding source in this case. But if this is the original source, then this could be uh, misinformation, information which is wrong by mistake or malinformation uh, as well. Now, what do you think about this? Like, isn't credibility uh, mm, still useful to evaluate how the source is making a credibility evaluation. And you think about it in this term, maybe the source is not sufficiently critical. Maybe the source is uh, using reasoning that is based on a cognitive distortion. For example, I will give you an example. Let's say that we have a message, uh, all immigrants are a threat to our society. Okay, so now the original source of this message might actually find it credible, might believe it. And if it does, it tells us something about this source. This source is using a generalized reasoning, which is a cognitive distortion, okay? So uh, perhaps what we should think about when we think about credibility and truth on the web, we should think about norms, uh, about norms on evaluating credibility, okay? Because the psychology and media science has found a lot of things uh, about how we should evaluate credibility, basically, okay? What is the right way of evaluating credibility? What is the wrong way, right? Based on that, we can propose such norms and teaching such norms would be a very good way to help uh, internet users to make sense of credibility online. But that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to say using these slides, but perhaps I can also just answer some of your questions. This is extremely interesting. Uh when I think of the, the credibility that you just have shown, that, shown us, uh, it is very much focused on how a usual netizen would like to approach this, this, this issue, meaning he is searching the, the internet, he is discovering uh, certain websites he, he serves, but uh, this is a kind of approach that tells you which of the sources you're currently reading is credible or not. 